Hello, I'm Jez Smith and a couple of weeks ago I launched a project called Agile for Recruiters which aims to increase the level of knowledge and understanding about Agile and its associated methodologies like Scrum and Kanban and XP amongst recruitment consultants, recruitment agencies and HR people. So a couple of weeks in I've now done an analysis of the first round of data and it's that that I'd like to share with you in this video. Um, but first of all I kind of want to set the context for this, how Agile for Recruiters came about, the problems that I started noticing and what made me think is there something we need to start fixing here in the first place. One of the greatest sources of this, I think, is in job ads. Um, I've seen a lot of job ads now for jobs in Agile, jobs in Scrum, jobs in, jobs in Kanban, um, and you just kind of see some odd errors creeping into them that kind of first got me thinking, is there something going on here? So to look at a few examples, here's one um, from a fairly standard job ad where they put Scrum in capitals. Um, I kind of get why this happens. Um, if you look at uh, traditional project management recruitment, um, quite often it's recruiting into roles in Prince2. And Prince2 stands for Projects in Controlled Environments 2. So it's an acronym, and as an acronym, it all goes in capital letters. Prince2 is in capitals. Um, but when people move into the world of Agile and Scrum, for some reason they seem to think Scrum is uh, an acronym as well and should be in capitals. So there's an example here. There's an example here where you see actually they've written Scrums in all capitals as if the S is part of the acronym too. Um, another example here where they use Scrum. Going on a bit actually, here's a really nice example where they've put Scrum in capitals and Kanban in capitals too, as if every Agile methodology, every Agile framework needs to be put in capitals if it's an acronym, which would be really clever, but really isn't the case. Um, I really like this one as well, uh, where they put Sprint in capitals, um, as if Sprint is an acronym, as if the whole world of Agile is just acronyms. And my absolute favourite, to cap it all, um, is this one, where they've put Agile in capitals, as if Agile is a really, really clever acronym of Agile somehow, which would be mind-blowing if it was the case, but again, isn't. Um, so yeah, when you see stuff like that, you start thinking, are people really getting this, or are they just seeing Agile and Scrum and so forth as just an extension of Prince2, just another project management methodology, a process that people work through, rather than a, a philosophy and a mindset that change that it really is. Looking at some other examples, um, I quite liked this one. Uh, this one has a couple of things in it that sort of stuck out. First of all, it was a job, a job advert for a Scrum Master, and it started reporting to the product owner. Um, and that's a bit odd. I'm not saying a Scrum Master couldn't report to the product owner, but there's an odd hierarchy going on there, but actually you're much more about flat hierarchies. Um, why would the product owner line manage a Scrum Master? Would that cause issues with the Scrum Master kind of being able to challenge the product owner and say, I think you're doing this wrong? Um, there's an odd power Power differential there that I think kind of wouldn't necessarily be helpful. Um, and also a bit of a simple misunderstanding I suppose. Um, the Scrum Master facilitates meetings, you know, retrospective, stand-ups, things like that. Um, they don't chair them. Chairing for me is a point of power. It's you're controlling it, you're deciding what the agenda is, you decide who speaks, who doesn't speak. When actually what you're doing is servant leading the team, you're facilitating them, you're bringing them together and, and helping them work together better. There's some interesting blog posts out there actually if you fancy a read where people start suggesting that the Scrum Master shouldn't even attend the daily stand-up that wants the stand-ups running properly. It's not really the Scrum Master's job to be involved in it. They should, you know, the, the team can run it themselves. Um, so yes, I'm a bit sceptical of the idea of sort of this hierarchical stuff and this chairing stuff. Um, you can see where it comes from. It comes from very traditional based organisations, uh, but it's not really kind of the agile mindset to my mind. There's a few other examples I want to run through as well. Um, so this one uh, is classic, um, following agile methodology. Um, which Agile isn't a methodology. Agile is a mindset, a philosophy, a way of seeing the world, a way of approaching problems, a way of approaching business that has methodologies within it. It has methodologies like Scrum, it has methodologies like Kanban and XP and so forth. Um, those are methodologies. Agile itself isn't a methodology. Um, this one really blew my mind a bit. You can kind of get a sense of the organisation recruiting with it, um, where it talks about um, ensure that Scrum and Kanban processes and techniques are followed in team and enforced. <laughs> Brilliant. Why would he, the Scrum Master, enforcing it, making sure it happens. How does that work with inspecting and adapting and saying to the team, right, is this working for you as a process? How can we improve this process every two weeks, every sprint, every however you want to break it up? Um, when actually the Scrum Master's job is to enforce the process. Um, it's just that mindset is just uh, completely wrong to my mind. Um, really, really fun one here. Um, where people talk about um, eight plus years experience working as part of agile development teams. And so you'll be very familiar with our agile manifesto and principles. 
Not the Agile Manifesto that was, you know, written back in the early 2000s and, you know, has inspired a huge amount of different business changes over time. Ah, Agile Manifesto. And I suspect this is just a, a misunderstanding when they've taken the brief from the client. They think the client's written an Agile Manifesto rather than the client is following the Agile Manifesto that the Agile's kind of founded on in many ways. Um, and this one, to finish with, absolute classic, um, where people are looking for a Scrum Master who's Prince2 certified. Um, as if somehow, you know, a Scrum Master is the same as a project manager and actually, if you're going to be a good project manager you have to understand Prince2 therefore your Scrum Master needs to be Prince2 certified and that's not to say there aren't some instances where that might be useful if you're in an organization that's transitioning from waterfall to agile if you're in an organization where one part of it is agile the rest is waterfall understanding Prince2 and understanding how to interact with Prince2 and the rest of the business or understanding where you're coming from and where you're moving to could be hugely useful but you see it's so often that Scrum Masters need to be Prince2 certified that you kind of think actually is this really a deep understanding of, of understanding organizational transition and interacting with the rest of the business or is this actually just a bit of a misunderstanding understanding that a scrum master is basically a project manager and good project managers prince two certified therefore scrum master should be prince two certified Another one I want to talk about is autoresponders. So I've been sending a few CVs to different recruiters um, and typically you get an autoresponder from them. And for me, some of these autoresponders really show kind of what, how their mindset works. Is it agile? Is it not agile? Um, so I'll start with a, a not great example, I think. Um, this one just came back and said, thank you for submitting your CV. Your application will be reviewed. We'll get in touch with you if a suitable position comes available. Uh, yours sincerely, blah, blah, blah. Please do not respond to this message. It's automatically generated and it's for information purposes only. And that's kind of a shame. Um, you know, I'd like some feedback. I'd like to be able to talk about this. I'd like to be able to understand the context and what's going on with this particular Scrum Master job, Agile Coach job, whatever. Understand, yeah, you know, really start getting into a two-way dialogue. So you can see, am I a good fit? Is the organisation a good fit for me? All these different context and nuance things that are hugely important to Agile that you can be useful to understand. Um, and if you just get an autoresponder saying basically, just don't talk to us, go away unless we contact you, it's kind of shutting that down. It's not really kind of, I don't think, part of the Agile mindset. Um, um, this one, though, was a great example. I loved it. Um, we're currently reviewing your application for the role above. Fair enough. If we need to ask a few questions about your CV, we'll be in touch. Fair enough. Otherwise, further updates regarding the status of your application will be sent to you by the end of the week latest. That's really nice. That's kind of making a commitment. It's kind of almost like you would at the start of a sprint, saying we're going to commit to delivering these things you know, within the next sprint or whatever. Um, that was really nice. It could be a bit of, sort of time scale and commitment on it. And also, even better, replying to this email will come directly into my inbox. So please feel free to follow up with me if I don't keep you updated with progress effectively, or if you have any further questions about the role. All the best. Um, lovely, really nice, opening up that two-way communication straight away. Um, and I appreciate everyone is really, really busy. If you, if every single recruiter had to reply to every single applicant they got, you know, I've done hiring quite a lot over the years. Sometimes you'll get a couple of hundred applications for a job. It would be kind of mind-blowing to try and deal with that. But I think there's an interesting halfway house here. Rather than just going, don't talk to us or not taking any calls or not, not responding to anybody unless you actually see them as a productive unit you can get some value out of by shipping them into an organisation. Um, you know, that seems really, really bad actually be better to sort of move more towards the collaborative open let's have a chat let's understand it and that actually comes out more in the analysis uh, for the survey which I want to talk about next really so yes, just a bit of background on Agile for Recruiters. That's where it came from. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, I launched a simple website. Uh, website had a couple of surveys on it, one for recruitment people, HR people, and one for Agile practitioners, kind of to get both sides of the story. What are recruiters thinking about Agile and what are practitioners thinking about recruiters in the context of Agile? And then comparing the two and seeing what results we came up with. Um, and I think they're really, really interesting. Um, it's only early days. The surveys are still open. I'm still gathering responses, but it's a lot of really interesting stuff come out so far. So first of all, um, it seems many Agile practitioners use recruiters. 94% um, of practitioners who responded said they have used Agile, they have used recruiters for finding jobs in Agile, Scrum, Kanban and so forth at some point. Um, obviously there's a bit of a selection bias thing here. Would someone respond to the survey if they'd never used it? Um, possibly not, possibly it's a survey kind of tailored to what is your experience of this stuff. So you're going to get more people saying they have used it than haven't used it. But still that's a pretty thumping number to my mind. And some people have said no. So some people are going through and filling it in even if they haven't used it. So yeah, I think it's clear to me anyway at this stage that recruiters and recruitment consultants seem to be a hugely important part of placing people into agile jobs, into organisations and organisational transformations presumably as well. 
On to the next one. Um, I kind of said, uh, are you, if you have used a recruiter or recruitment agency um, and finding a job in Agile, were you satisfied with it? Were you satisfied with the experience? Um, no, really, seemed to be the answer. Um, only 10% of people said they were satisfied or um, very satisfied with the recruitment experience. About a quarter said they were neither satisfied nor dissatisfied, a bit kind of meh. Um, but actually, a quarter said they were very dissatisfied and nearly two thirds said they were dissatisfied or very dissatisfied. That's really quite big to my mind as, a, as an industry if I were on the recruitment side and I saw that basically two thirds of people were dissatisfied with the service and one quarter of people kind of weren't bothered, only 10% were satisfied or very satisfied. That's really something you would want to start dealing with to my mind. So the next question I found really interesting because I put it in both surveys and basically said um, to uh, recruiters, how would you rate your knowledge and understanding of Agile and its frameworks? And then said to practitioners, how would you, if you've dealt with a recruiter, how would you rate their knowledge and understanding of Agile and its frameworks? Um, and I was kind of expecting different results here and got very different results. So if you look at how many people said uh, their knowledge was excellent, 5% of recruiters said their knowledge was excellent, but not one single practitioner said their recruiter's knowledge was excellent. 24% um, of recruiters said that their knowledge was good, and only 3% of practitioners said that uh, their recruiter's knowledge was good. Around saying that the recruiter's knowledge was basic, they were kind of more even, really. Um, Recruiters, 62% of them said they had a basic knowledge, 55% of practitioners said their recruiter had a basic knowledge, um, but fairly even. But the big difference again comes when it says, you know, they have no knowledge of Agile and its uh, frameworks, where 10% of recruiters admitted that um, they didn't have any knowledge of Agile and its frameworks. And thank you, if you are those recruiters, everything is completely confidential, but I really appreciate your honesty with this one. It's really great to know we're getting some really good data. It takes something to go, you know what, I just don't know. Um, thank you. Um, but at the same time, 41% of practitioners said their um, recruiter had no knowledge or understanding of Agile and its frameworks, which again is really worrying. If you're hiring into an industry, you kind of would hope you would at least have a basic knowledge. Um, and 41% is a pretty big number to be saying actually they had no knowledge whatsoever. So one of my theories around this was... Um, is there a problem with the fact that recruiters actually aren't working purely in Agile? They're not specialising in Agile, therefore they don't really need to understand it in any great depth, or they just haven't got the time and resources. I'm, you know, There's no one saying recruiters are bad here for not understanding this stuff. Maybe they just haven't had the time, the motivation, the resources, the incentive, whatever, whatever structural things there are stopping them do this. Um, but I thought, you know, are there recruiters who are working just in Agile? Um, and are there recruiters who are actually working across both? And some recruiters, I gave them an option as well for recruiters who were weren't working in Agile. And here the vast majority of them um, said that they recruit for both Agile and non-Agile jobs. 83% of recruiters said they recruit in both industries. Only 12% of them said they only recruit Agile jobs. So really of the recruiters that responded, there's not really a specialism going on here. It's people kind of typically going, you know what, I work across both. Um, and maybe that's part of the issue here. Maybe that's part of the problem why they don't really understand Agile because they're kind of working across Agile and not Agile and backwards and forwards and so forth and they haven't got the time or the resources or the money or the inclination or whatever it may be to start understanding Agile. Moving on then, I kind of had uh, an initial thing I wanted to test with this project where, you know, is this a problem? Does this matter? Um, because I was perfectly prepared in that kind of agile way to put this site up, run a survey, and have most people go, you know what, actually everything's fine, not really a problem, you don't need to worry about this. And then I could have stopped the project and gone and done something else. Um, perfectly, perfectly open to that. But of the practitioners that responded, actually, you know, a lot of them said it was a problem. So 90% of practitioners said um, it was a problem that their um, recruiter and HR or HR person um, didn't understand agile and its frameworks. Only 10% said it wasn't a problem. Um, I'm going to take that as a kind of endorsement at this stage that there's something going on here, there's something we could potentially fix, and you know this project has use to both recruiters and to agile practitioners as well. Um, so the next thing I wanted to look at was what did practitioners say the problems were? Um, because obviously, you know, you can say there's a problem, so what, what are we going to do about it? What, what, how do we understand what the problems are and how we can start fixing them, really? Um, and I want to share with you a bit of sort of free text here. It's all anonymized, all confidential. Um, but yeah, share a bit of some of the, 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 the problems uh, um, practitioners were raising about recruiters in this space. 
So the first one to mention really is that some people were saying actually the problem starts with the hiring organisation. The problem doesn't start with, uh, with the recruiter themselves. Um, so someone said hiring companies need to have a much clearer understanding of what sorts of roles they're asking recruiters to hire for. Agile project managers and scrum masters with previous experience of project management are two good examples. The roles are different, they need to be treated as such. And someone else said uh, their clients often don't understand, so recruiters compound the problem instead of fixing it. Um, which again is a really, really interesting one. And kind of one of the things I've been thinking about with this project is actually if we empower the recruiters to understand Agile much better, they can then uh, challenge back to their clients and go, if you're looking for this sort of role, this is what it means, this is the mindset you should be having with it, um, why you're asking for Prince 2, all that kind of stuff. Um, so we can empower recruiters to kind of make the, industry, well, the, the community and the Agile practice better um, and so forth. But having said that, um, it's clear that actually the failure to understand Agile is widespread within recruiters as well. So if you look at some of the comments from this, um, people saying um, they put the wrong people in the wrong jobs with adverts like, we want a scrum master, product owner, project manager. It demonstrates a clear lack of knowledge and good luck making that work too. Um, no one said there were a lot of Agile project manager roles I see advertised. Some of them are scrum master roles, some are project manager roles, some are weird hybrids which make no sense at all. Um, and I love this one as well. Adverts often reinforce anti-patterns, e.g. Agile project manager. Um, and that's kind of making the point again that Agile is not just about project management. It's not just a, a different version of Prince to a different process you run through. Um, and that feeling came through quite strongly in all the different responses. Um, so yeah, that seems to be one thing we need to get across, that this isn't just another job you just chuck people into, like you know, standard project management. Actually, you need to understand the mindset going on here um, for the benefit of the client, for the benefit of yourself, and for the benefit of the practitioner. So looking at some of the other issues, um, this one really, really struck me. Uh, and I kind of, link, thinking back, don't know why I hadn't really clocked it before, but it seems really big and really fundamental. So lots of people saying that basically, if the recruiter lacks knowledge of Agile and its frameworks, how can they actually assess candidates for roles? Um, so various quotes here, just because someone has a certified Scrum Master certification doesn't make them a coach. Um, they don't understand the skills required in a good Agile coach. They look for years of experience regardless of Agile knowledge. Uh, they don't understand the different types of Agile coaches, for example, someone with a technical, business or enterprise background. Um, the recruitment process categorises Agile coaches as people who simply do a job when a good Agile coach should facilitate change. And a really, really nice one, I thought, it's hard to show servant leadership in a CV. Um, that seems really, really true, because servant leadership is all about putting others forward rather than yourself and supporting others and helping them grow and develop. Um, so how do you demonstrate that you did a load of stuff that no one ever saw because they thought the team did it, not you? Um, yeah, really tricky. But kind of, I think if Agile, recru if Agile recruiters started to understand servant leadership, they could start pulling out some of those nuances and really understanding, is this person an actual servant leader or do they just kind of clear blockers out of the way for the team and so forth? Um, so yeah, fundamentally, how do recruiters recruit into Agile jobs in a really successful and meaningful way if they can't really assess candidates because they don't know what the candidates are talking about, they don't know what their experience means, um, there's huge knowledge gaps there. For me, that's a really, really fundamental issue. That's not just a, it would be nice if we sort of made this a bit better and stopped people writing Scrum in capitals. That kind of goes to the root of, of what's going on here, I think. So yeah, really, really interesting. And that message came through in lots, lots of different responses in lots of different ways. So someone then kind of summed up really and said, you know, if this happens, this leaves clients open to getting people who have buzzword list but no actual knowledge or experience of real agile. Um, yeah, hugely worrying, hugely problematic, hugely risky for clients, I think, if you get people who don't really know what they're doing, um, don't really fit in that context and just kind of, you know, going through, they've got a certification, they've got some buzzwords, they've managed to put down a million years experience, etc., um, without actually really getting it. And unless the recruiter can get under the skin of what the practitioner is doing and what the approach they take to Agile, I think that's, that's really, really tricky to challenge. Another stuff, um, so recruiters should consider the practitioner and hiring organisation context. And this is really, really big and agile anyway, the whole context issue. Um, but people saying, you know, they don't ask questions about my experience. And this is kind of something I've noticed myself. People go, well, how many years experience have you got? And you tell them and then they move on. You're like, but you don't want to know what? the context of that experience was, how it shaped me, what I learned from it, what I would do differently. You know, maybe this stuff comes out later in an interview, but that context and experience is hugely important. Experience isn't just a number of years, it's, it's what it did to you. And actually, a really short, intense, powerful experience can be so much more transformative than just treading water as a scrum master and running the ceremonies every two weeks for years and years and years. Yes, you've got experience, but you haven't really done anything, challenged anything or learned anything. Um, looking at some of the other ones, 
So recruiters think Agile is a process like any other software development lifecycle process, which is not, and that is the problem. Um, that for me is really, really interesting too. It's about the mindset, it's not about the process. Uh, Agile is seen as a thing people do rather than a cultural mindset. So many Scrum Master job descriptions are cut and paste jobs where the nuances of what is required in that specific context are not mentioned. Again, context, hugely, hugely important and kind of giving people a sense of that context. Is the organisation at the start of their Agile journey? Is the organisation at the end of the journey? Are they well established with it? Have they done well and now it's falling backwards? All these different potential contexts that are, that are useful to know. Um, yeah, and someone else summed this up when they said, really hard to get insight into how mature the organisation is. When did the organisation start their Agile journey? Um, that'd be a really simple question to ask clients and a really simple one to put on um, job adverts and just go, you know, Scrum Master needed for organisation that is literally just beginning its Agile journey or has been using Agile for two years or has been using Agile within one team and is now spreading it into different teams or is completely Agile across the entire business. Um, a really, really simple question to ask clients and a really simple question then to put on the job description um, and would give a lot of context around stuff I think and really help to, to start to open up some of those really interesting things that practitioners are interested in um, rather than just you know the standard cut and paste job description. And there's kind of an all else to this as well. Um, so some people said what the consequences would be if these things didn't start happening. Um, one person said, or else it means a lot of filtering we, the candidates, shouldn't need to do. So actually candidates see job descriptions and then they have to go through and filter them and go, am I right for this job? Um, am I not right for this job? Is this job right for me, etc." When actually if more information were around them, the right sort of information around candidates could actually you know, decide much more quickly. Um, one really interesting one, if I was a recruiter, this would worry me, where they said, recruiters don't understand what they're recruiting for and can put off the good practitioners altogether. Um, so if you don't get agile and you don't get what you're talking about in this area, are you actually putting off the good candidates and the good candidates are going elsewhere, which surely harms your bottom line. Um, so yes, for me, that's another really, really powerful incentive for recruit recruiters to start, to start understanding agile. Um, and the final one, so agile transformations fail, that's damaging the reputation of the field. Fundamentally, you know, if recruiters start getting this wrong and the wrong people end up in the wrong jobs, um, then entire ag ag agile transformations can fail and that harms agile. You know, no one else takes the blame. The candidate doesn't take the blame, the recruiter doesn't take the blame, the organisation doesn't take the blame, typically anyway. Um, it's much more about saying, well, Agile doesn't work here. Agile isn't a good idea. Um, when actually what's happened is the wrong person has turned up and you know that's harmed the transformation, the transformation has failed and so forth. So yeah, really risky. And I think once it's failed in an organization and Agile's taken the blame, A, it's very unlikely to come back in that organization. B, it's kind of unlikely to spread further as well because that organization will talk to other organizations about their, their particular Agile transformation. And that's kind of on all of us. That affects recruiters, that affects Agile practitioners, that affects everybody. If the Agile and agile sort of transformation and the spread of agile across different um, organizations really starts getting set back then we all have less work we all have less interesting things to do we all have less opportunity um, and that's really really bad so yeah this is the kind of thing we're looking to fix really so moving on really, um, what could recruiters do to start addressing these problems? And I looked at this in two ways. One was to come up with a, a short list of things that, you know, different aspects of Agile and its frameworks that recruiters could learn about, and then say to the recruiters, which of these would you be most interested in learning about? Um, to see what, we see what their take on it was. And this was interesting because we got um, the same result for two of them and the two sort of ones out in the lead where recruiters most want to learn about the Agile mindset and Agile frameworks. Um, and that's kind of really good, I think, because actually then it's about, well, you know, um, they're understanding both the mindset behind it and the processes and frameworks that Agile is, is implemented with day to day. And fundamentally, I think if you get those two things, you're really, really going quite some way to, to getting this and understanding with it and working with clients better and working with practitioners better as well. Look at some of the other ones. Um, so only 40% wanted to know more about industries adopting Agile. That was interesting. I thought recruiters might actually want to know more about you know where Agile is spreading. It's not just a software thing. You know, It's moving into marketing. There's talk of it moving into accounting. Um, all sorts of different areas, Agile and, and Scrum and so forth are spreading. Um, so I thought that might have been interesting, but actually that was the lowest, the lowest one of the lot. Um, other ones are uh, talking about Agile certifications. There's been some mention already in some of the practitioner responses about, you know, just because you're a certified Scrum Master doesn't mean you're a coach. Some of the other responses that came in, people were saying, you know, 
getting some of the lower level certifications is kind of meaningless. Someone said anyone with a pulse can get a low level certification. Um, so I kind of thought it'd be interesting for wood recruiters wanting to know more about the different certifications. Because on the other end of it, there are some certifications that are incredibly hard to get and very, very, very few people hold. And if you get one of those, and if you see a candidate with one of those certifications, crikey, you should grab them because they're really, you know, there's only a handful of people kind of in the UK or in the world with them. Um, and they're hugely rigorous and require huge amounts of experience to get. So yeah, understanding those I thought could be quite useful. But I guess, you know, recruiters kind of thought it was useful, not, you know, as useful as the mindset and frameworks, which is great because mindset and frameworks I think are the most important. Um, and another one I think is really interesting personally in this context is can bonuses be agile? There's another video on my YouTube channel about uh, bonuses in the context of agile and actually how they're really, really difficult and they kind of can harm agility quite strongly in various different ways. Um, so yeah, I wanted to talk about that one a bit and maybe appraisals, um, performance appraisals. And this came up in a few people's responses actually where people said, you know, performance appraisals should be collective and if they're individual and you're assessed in an individual way and you're kind of, and, yeah, and that then bleeds into the recruitment process that's kind of fundamentally anti-agile it should be collaborative not not individual and sort of every person against each other and so forth um so yeah something potentially interesting there and people were vaguely interested in it you know 47 um 48 percent of people were interested in that one so yeah that was kind of a bit of a sounding but I also said to practitioners, what's the one thing you wish your recruiter knew? It's really trying to get, you know, what's the most, and there must be a million things people would like people to know, but what for them was the most important thing they wanted their recruiter to understand about Agile and, and its frameworks? And again, looking at some of the verbatim answers on this one. Um, so one person said they want them to know that a project manager is not a scrum master or an agile coach. That's come up quite a lot already. Um, you know, there's a difference between project management and scrum um, and agile and so forth. And they want kind of recruiters to understand the difference between the two. Also, that um, the clear difference between scrum, Kanban, XP and lean practices is not the same thing to prepare for a scrum master interview versus an agile project manager role. Um, another person said that low-level certifications are way too easy to get and thus meaningless. I mentioned that one briefly before. Um, really interesting one, there's more to it than Scrum. And there's a really interesting talk by James Harvey in Bristol the other day uh, where he was talking about, you know, actually Agile isn't the same as Scrum, obviously. But, you know, there's more to it. There's different frameworks you can use. There's Kanban, there's XP, there's all sorts of different things. Um, and quite often a lot of the jobs you see advertised are just talking about Scrum. And is, is it really that Scrum is the only thing people are using in the Agile world? Or is it just that you've got a cut and paste job description and you kind of figure if someone understands Scrum, they'll probably get Kanban a bit and they can just turn up and probably work it out when they go along. You know, there's different frameworks. It'd be nice to see recruiters understanding those different frameworks and kind of promoting those frameworks and maybe even challenging clients and going, your project doesn't sound like it needs a Scrum master. Your project sounds much more Kanban. Why aren't you doing Kanban with it? Um, and therefore I look for a Kanban professional for you, not a Scrum professional. Um, and then, you know, you get a much better fit for the role, much greater success of the organization, much happier client, much happier practitioner everybody wins. It'd be really, really nice. Um, and this one I want to include, it's slightly provocative. Um, but yeah, basically someone said they would wish they knew that if you require a PMP, project, man project management certification, of a scrum master, you're absolutely clueless. <laughs> so yeah, again, it's that thing of really loud and clear saying that there's a difference here between agile and project management. And if you're experienced in recruiting into project management, maybe, you know, you really need to rethink how you're doing some of that stuff when you're moving into the agile space. Um, looking at some of the other answers as well. So... People said they wish practitioners knew that it isn't an ad adaptation of project planning, but a completely revolutionary way of changing business. Um, again, this is really, really important, I think, that actually, you know, Agile and Scrum and so forth really fundamentally challenge a lot of business practices and clients should understand that and clients should be coming to recruiters saying, you know, this is a business transformation thing in many cases we're doing here. I need someone who can manage change, who can do business transformation as much as someone who's just got a certification or understands the ceremonies and so forth. Someone else said the different practitioners, or that different practitioners specialise in different areas. Some organisations need strong engineering practice, test-driven development, behaviour-driven uh, development, continuous deployment and so forth. Um, others need uh, more support at the project slash discovery end. Um, someone else, again, kind of similar about the context as well, that it's more of a cultural and human than a functional process. Finding cultural fit and empathetic individuals is important. You can't recruit for these roles in the same way you would, for example, traditional project management. And then following on from that, someone said they need to understand the mindset and how deep an impact agile practitioner can have on a company, brackets good or bad. So yeah, again, it's really understanding that mindset, understanding that this is about change and about fit and about empathy and about human interaction and collaboration and communication, not just a process that you get certified in and then you can do it and that's that kind of thing. Um, 
So yes, there's one final point uh, that I haven't included in the survey because I put this on LinkedIn and actually got shared a lot on LinkedIn and thank you so much for all of you that liked it and shared it and um, got the survey responses up through that way. Um, but in that thing, uh, I talked about the agile industry and actually if you watch back this video, I very nearly said it a couple of times too. For some reason it's stuck in my head, industry in agile. Um, and people really don't like that. People take against the idea that agile is an industry and I kind of get that. Um, so yes, apologies for that. Feedback heard, feedback understood and uh, I shall endeavour not to say Agile Industry again. I think Agile Community is much nicer. I'll go with that one unless anyone's got any better suggestions and would like to send them in to me. So I want to look briefly at some of the limitations of this survey. Um, obviously, you know, this data I think is really, really interesting and is getting some clear patterns coming out of it already. Um, but it's important to clarify a few things. First of all, um, this survey is mostly, almost completely responded to by recruiters. Um, I'm really interested too in the role of HR within agile um, transformations, agile adoption and so forth, because uh, I think, you know, it will require a big mindset change on the part of HR people to understand Agile and, and deal with it better um, and understand you know, uh, performance bonuses and appraisals and all that kind of thing. And I know there are some people out there working on this, um, which is great. Uh, but yeah, it'd be nice to hear from more HR people at the moment on the recruiter side, on the sort of recruiting HR side, it's nearly all recruiters who responded. Um, also uh, talk a bit about, um, we've had more responses from recruiters than practitioners. Um, and they're kind of not too far, 58% versus 42%, it's, it's even-ish. Um, but it would be really, really nice to get some more practitioner responses. Because um, some of the practitioner responses are some of the most illuminating. Um, and some of the most illuminating of those are the ones people send in anonymously, which is really interesting, I think, that people wouldn't put a name to some of their more critical stuff. Um, which I don't even want to speculate quite why, but thank you for all of those you did. And if you do want to fill in the survey anonymously, all you need to do is just not put your email address at the bottom um, and, you know, anonymous, fine. Uh, so yeah, more than welcome to do that. So yeah, hearing from more practitioners would be really, really nice. Um, although I'm not, you know, it's it's an okay balance so far. And um, we've got kind of a decent representation from both sides, but obviously more practitioners, more recruiters, more HR people, more people basically would be really, really good. Um, the more data we get, the more we can start fixing these problems. So I want to talk about where next. Um, this is deliberately kind of an agile mindset project. Um, I wanted to test, you know, two very simple things. Um, is there a problem in this area? And if so, are people interested in fixing it? And I think we've identified that there is a problem in this area and that people are interested in fixing it. So tick, brilliant. I think this project should do another two weeks and see what happens with it then, um, see what it's up to. So these are the three things I kind of like to do next with it. Um, First of all, as I mentioned before, gather more responses. The more data we get, the stronger the insights will be, the stronger the analysis will be, and the more we can do to, to start to fix these problems. So yes, if you do uh, want to share a link, agile, agileforrecruiters.com, um, please do send it to anyone you know, tweet about it, share it on LinkedIn, um, put it wherever you want. Um, you know, it'd be great to get as many responses as possible. Um, as I also mentioned as well, more HR people. Um, I've targeted a few HR people already. There's some friends of mine working in HR being sending it out to their contacts. Um, but yeah, I'd really like to hear from all HR people on their experiences of working within Agile and some of its frameworks. Um, and then also, I think we just need to get on with this. Um, I want to start developing some resources for recruiters and HR people around understanding Agile, its mindset, its frameworks, uh, maybe running some training sessions too, um, putting those on, either coming in, doing in-house ones or putting on some public ones anyone can attend. I have a slight doubt that recruiters would want to attend training sessions alongside other recruiters. I get the, a strong impression it's quite a cutthroat industry quite money driven, quite profit motivated and therefore if you sat in a room with all of your competitors and happily discussed all of your problems in a very fluffy, sharing, collaborative, agile way, yeah, you probably wouldn't do that. It might not be the mindset and I'm here working, you know, you've got to respect the industry and the context you're working in. Um, so yes, not sure on that one, but I think I want to get on with, with creating some, some training and resources and actually get that moving and start trying to fix this problem even whilst more data is being collected. So yeah, that's the results so far. It's only two weeks in. Um, I'd like to do another report on this when we get some more results in. So yes, please do share it. Um, if you have any thoughts at all, any feedback on this, on the project, on me, on the report, on the analysis, anything at all, really, really would love to hear from hear from you. Um, so drop me a line, jez at bunnypicnic.co.uk. Um, that'll come straight through to me and it'd be great to hear from you. I've also made the report a Creative Commons license, so you're free to share it, um, you're free actually to adapt it, to build on it, to modify it, even for commercial purposes. The only um, requirement with that is if that you do 
um, share. If you do sort of adapt it, change it, use it for commercial purposes, whatever you produce doing that must also be shared under the same Creative Commons license. If you want to just Google Creative Commons license or um, look up the type of license that's listed on the bottom of the report, um, then you can read more details about that. But yeah, do feel free to pass this on to anyone. It's open, it's kind of Creative Commons. Um, do with it what you will. Um, it's kind of here to be useful for you, really. Um, also, yes, do share the surveys with anyone you want to. And finally, if you have enjoyed this video and you'd like to know more about this sort of stuff and stay up to date with it, then do leave a like below um, or click the subscribe button as well and subscribe to this channel and um, I'll be doing more videos on this sort of stuff in the future. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed that. I found it hugely interesting. Thank you all of you for responding. Um, really, really interesting stuff. I think there's a problem here and I think it's a problem we can fix. So let's get on and fix it.